Tavares Smith! What's up, y'all? How you doing? Everything good? Everything good? Everything good? good to be here. I just pulled up in San Diego today. I'm visiting from LA. Um, San Diego is one of my favorite cities on earth. Uh, shout out to y'all. I like San Diego because it's like, it's the perfect mix of red state stuff and blue state stuff. <laughs> I feel like you need both, like a good balance of both to have a successful city. San Diego is that. Like too much of either is a horrible thing. <laughs> Too much red state stuff, it's like, it's not a lot of diversity, which is ironic because it's mostly white people. In here. <laughs> <laughs> I see some Mexicans today. <laughs> a lot of diversity, no abortions, not a lot to do, racism, all that stuff. Too much blue stuff, blue state stuff. You get like LA, like homeless and encampments everywhere. You know, people doing heroin outside the Gucci store. <laughs> Racism, you know, just... It's crazy, man. Um, but uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting year so far, because, you know, I feel like we as a society found out a lot of things like that we didn't know before. Like, we found out UFOs are, are real. <laughs> right, it's crazy. <laughs> found out about that train derailment in Ohio. They were like kind of hiding it, strangely. Like TikTok guys got on there and was like, yo, you wouldn't believe it. The water looks like a Lisa Frank notebook. <laughs> Someone else we found out. What else we found out? We find out, race, we found out racism makes women's basketball profitable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lie, you know, that one little you can't see me gesture gave ESPN like a month worth of material. It's like, I know the WNBA is pissed that they didn't think of that sooner. It's like, lean into it, you know what I mean? Like, they should sell those hands with big foam hands. <laughs> one black one, one white one. <laughs> The white one says competitive, the black one says classless, you know, just, just lean into it. Just have Tucker, Tucker Carlson perform at halftime. <laughs> oh man, I don't know, but just random stuff has been happening to me that like just really puts, it's really been putting a lot of things into perspective. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I get a little emotional talking, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was at Bed Bath & Beyond the other day, and uh, <laughs> this is tied to what I just said. It was a weird transition, I was in line at checkout, and there was this old white lady in front of me, and she was trying to use a, a coupon that was expired, and the cashier told her no, and she called him a bitch-ass nigga. It was crazy. I was shocked too, cause you know, he was Asian and I was like, that's not even correct. Like, but it really put things into perspective cause I was sitting there shocked and I was like, damn, like, this is who we got vaccinated for? Like, I'm trying to do great things before the world ends. You know, I got goals. I want to do well enough in life to be affected by the California brush fires. So my parents, they hit me up every year. They live in the Midwest. They hit me up every year around the same time. Yo, dog, you good? I heard about the fires, are you good? 
It's like that. I'm on a bus in Compton. <laughs> The skies are clear. About to, get, about to get a fourteen dollar acai bowl. Do some yoga, you know. Uh, been going through a lot though, man. You know, just nothing crazy, just life stuff mostly. Um, so much so that my parents suggested that I seek a therapist. Uh, so I took their advice and I got a girlfriend. It's been going really well. She's great. She's great. Um, sometimes we argue over stupid stuff, though. I'm not going to lie. We were in downtown LA a few weeks ago. Downtown LA is a little sketchy. But it was all good. We were walking hand in hand, middle of the day, real romantic comedy like. And we turned the corner and this cracked out homeless dude was like, God damn, you sexy. <laughs> and I felt bad. My girl immediately got uncomfortable. She clenched my arm. She grabbed her purse. I'm like, shit, I got to say some tough shit now. <laughs> so I did. I stood up to him. I said, hey, man, it's my girlfriend. Show us some respect. <laughs> He was like, I was talking to you, nigga. <laughs> I was pissed off too, man, because, you know, I was really upset because she didn't say shit to this dude. You know <laughs> Let him talk to me like I'm a piece of meat. <laughs> we also argue, I don't know. We argue in the morning. So she says weird stuff to me in the morning sometimes. Like the other day, we woke up, she turned over. Hey, how'd you sleep? A lot of H words, so the breath was coming in hot. <laughs> but it's love, you know what I'm saying? Like it's but she was like, I had a dream that you cheated on me. And it made me really upset. And that made me really upset. And I know what you're thinking. I got upset because what am I doing as a partner? to cause my girl subconscious, to cause her to dream about me cheating on her. It's not why I was upset. I was upset, cause like, yo, why she use the word dream? <laughs> it's a whole nother word that means bad dream. That's a horrible thing. That's a nightmare. Martin Luther King had a dream. <laughs> It's not called Dream on Elm Street. <laughs> my worst fear in the context of my relationship is coming home from a long day of work, walking in on my girl, getting banged out by six white cops <laughs> wearing do-rags <laughs> while Drake films it for some reason. <laughs> Under no circumstance would I break it up like, hey! I dreamt about this moment. <laughs> she gotta get that together, man. You know, comedy is cool, but my real passion is entrepreneurship. <laughs> I want to open an organic juice bar called Free OJ. <laughs> All the menu items named after somebody that got away with killing somebody. <laughs> the Suge Knight strawberry smoothie. <laughs> the Alec Baldwin wellness shot. <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> the Casey Anthony apple juice. <laughs> uh, I told you it got worse. <laughs> That'd be on the kids' menu, too. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are great. I always thought it was interesting that when black people see a cute baby, they go, aw. Whereas white people threaten to eat it. I was at the farmer's market with my girl, and I saw a cute baby, and I'm not gonna lie, it was cute. I was like, oh, look at that. 
Look at that shit. <laughs> And this middle-aged white lady right next to us, out loud so everybody can hear, was like, Oh my God, I just want to eat those cheeks! I was like, what kind of freaky-ass shit? I turned to my girl, I was like, Babe, why is that lady cat-calling that baby? It's like, babe, that's some shit I would say to you. White people don't get enough credit for getting rich off doing regular shit. I'll explain. Did y'all know white people figured out a way to sell cold weather? Y'all know what I'm talking about? They just gave it a cool name. They call it cryotherapy. I went to one of these, have y'all heard of this? I went to one of these things, my girl talked me into it. She's like, it's good for recovery, blah, blah, blah. The cashier was all hype. He was like, yo, we can play you know, your favorite song. We give you some mittens and, and like a, a towel kilt type thing. Is it called a kilt? Yeah, one of them dress things with like buttons on it. And some socks. I was like, can we keep the socks? He was like, nah. <laughs> but then it was time for us to get in the chamber. We get in the chamber for three minutes. Before we got in the chamber, the dude was so hype. He was like, you know, we give you some Beast by Dre headphones and we can play your favorite song. I was just like, bro, this is like recreating standing on the bus stop in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Pay $87 for that shit. <laughs> Had a tip screen and everything. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't put my socks on. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I have an older brother. He's black. <laughs> and uh, he's one of my favorite people. Um, one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram. Um, he's got a wife, four kids, four dogs, psycho shit. <laughs> but um, one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram because he posts these hood inspirational quotes <laughs> where he's not even quoting anybody. He'll just write some shit and put it in quotes. He like quotes himself. <laughs> But he wrote something the other day I thought was super dope. He was like, <clears throat> when my first son was born, I made my family two promises. We gonna win, and I never abandon my kids. And I was like, yo, that shit hard, yo. That shit is dope. I like that. But then I took an edible and I read it again. And I was just like, damn, nigga, that's all you promised your family? <laughs> You are underperforming, sir. <laughs> Dad, you promise we gonna get Christmas gifts this year? Uh, we gonna win. <laughs> I was at a gay bar a few weekends ago. Um, because I needed somewhere quiet to watch March Madness. <laughs> it was great, they got good deals. Uh, great experience, but I went to the bathroom and I was at the urinal and painted right above the urinal on the wall in this really artsy font. It was like, of all the species in the world, homophobia only exists in humans. And I was like, yo, that shit is sad, yo. It's messed up. When you really think about it, it's sad. But then I took an edible and I read it again. <laughs> and I was just like, nigga, how you know that? <laughs> you don't think gnats have beef with fruit flies? Like, <laughs> You don't think the other birds look at flamingos like, why are you standing like that? <laughs> oh, man. My favorite thing about racism <laughs> is that homeless people never ask me for money. Y'all pulling back, but it's amazing. 
Like, it happens all the time. Like, I'll be coming out of Target, two white people in front of me, one homeless guy. He'll see the white people. Spare a dollar? Damn. Spare a dollar? Damn. And he sees me and he's like... <laughs> different when it's a black homeless person be the same scenario I'm coming out of Target two white people in front of him he's like spare a dollar damn spare a dollar damn and he sees me and he's like god damn you sexy <laughs> <laughs> uh, shoot. my girl came home a few weeks ago and she was really upset because uh, she found out that she owed the government four thousand dollars in taxes and she was crying and i'm not gonna lie i was crying i started crying too you know but i did what i had to do what i had to do i hugged her i brought i brought her in close and i whispered in her ear i was like <clears throat> we made it nigga. <laughs> she is crossed into the path uh, into the into the threshold of people that owe the government taxes. All you brokies getting hyped for tax season. I'm about to get a refund. We out here stressed. That's a stunt. I walk around my neighborhood with a whole different attitude. It's a lot of trash on this ground. Paying all these goddamn taxes. 